now take you to the broadcast of It's Time with Reverend Nathaniel W. Martin. Here is Reverend Martin. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and hello to each and every one of you that may be looking at this video. And we trust that your year and your day and your life is bringing forth to you everything that you need and everything that you could want it to be. And may God continue to bless you. Our scripture for our broadcast is found in the fifth chapter of James, verse 4, which says very simply, Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which by you is kept back by fraud, crieth. And the cries of them who have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Those are our marching orders, our concern, our interest with the common man, the common working woman. These days, not so common because it seems like we're all under attack now. And it doesn't matter whether you're sitting at the captain's table or you're down in steerage. If you're on the Titanic, you're in trouble. We have an interesting development in our a weekly uh, broadcast of things that are occurring in our world. I want to start, first start talking about net neutrality because that affects what I do, it affects what you see, and it affects all of the smaller uh, operators who depend on the Internet and the Internet speed to get their message across, to get their data out and get their data in. I'm sure all of you remember back in the old days of AOL when you sit there with that, watching that little hourglass go round and round and round, and you faithfully watched it. But now we have very fast speeds. But by the vote of the FCC this week, which was three to two, that's in jeopardy because the uh, larger uh, broadcasters or the larger markets could demand that uh, the distributors give them more speed, and which would leave less speed for people like myself. And so it's a very interesting time in which we live. And if, if you've watched the iterations that the FCC has undergone uh, down through the years, I think when they started uh, back in 1934, uh, we were the institute. Their purpose was to look out for the public good, make sure that uh, the interest of the community, especially that local community, was being served. And of course, now with these national conglomerates coming in, Viacom uh, and the like, it's a different uh, world, different uh, scene, because whereas before in uh, earlier years you had like 400 stations, now these conglomerates have come down to six major owners of the spectrum uh, for our broadcasting. And that affects radio and it affects the television. And so that doesn't leave much. And with the new merger uh, in the works, where Disney's going to try to buy 20th, 21st Century Fox, the landscape is changing, my friends. And you got to stay abreast of it and stay up and stay aware of what is happening because it's going to affect what you do, affect what you see, and affect your speed of your computer or your movie uh, that you may be watching at any time. We're in some terrible times, in a manner of speaking, because the big fish are more or less eating up the little fish faster and faster than ever before. And it's really not something that you and I can afford to ignore. We've got to stay abreast and stay aware of what is going on. I found it very interesting that it was under Barack Obama and Bill Clinton that some of the greatest deregulations occurred for the uh, FCC in their regulation of the airways. And most of us don't realize, because we are paying these big companies, that those airways belong to the public, and they're there to, to serve the public good. And 
a local station like this that we're broadcasting on, KTYM, uh, is serving the public public good. It may not have 50,000 uh, watts to its power, uh, but it serves a purpose. And the, one of the big problems or the dangers of this uh, media consolidation is that the big networks will not allow the smaller networks to uh, have the content or they will demand that the uh, smaller affiliates uh, show program only programming that they provide and you won't be able to uh, refuse to show that, that type of programming. And uh, that kind of flies in the face of our exercise of our democracy because democracy by its very nature is of the people. But now with these new conglomerates taking over and buying up more and more of the spectrum and shutting down the voices of the uh, local, less, let's say, less rich uh, stations and channels, we're in for a big sea change. And so we ask you to stay woke, stay watchful, stay engaged, because we working people are the first ones to feel the pinch uh, when these changes happen uh, in our community and in our, our neighborhoods. I want to say hi and uh, wish everyone a Merry Christmas out there while we're coming through. Uh, all of our news is not bad. God is good. And we trust that your Christmas will be merry and that uh, you will get an opportunity to give the gift to those that you most deserve to feel are most deserving to receive them. It's not more so much about receiving, but it is about the giving, unless you're a kid. And we thank you for this uh, opportunity to share with you and to uh, go over some of the ideas that are happening uh, here in this media market, here in this area of uh, uh, Los Angeles. And I know most of you have seen that shocking video of Daniel Shavers being killed by and executed or really assassinated by uh, those six uh, Mesa, Arizona police. And the officer that did the shooting was uh, acquitted. And I think the shooting occurred in January, January 18th of 2016. And the jury acquitted Officer Philip Brailsford of, uh, in the death of uh, Brother Daniel Shavers, who was on his knees crying with his arms up and begging for his life. And it looks like the poison that has been so often visited upon black people is now being visited upon even white people indiscriminately. But remember... Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. That's why we must all not be silent. We must all speak up. We must all make our voices heard on this police training, the police tactics, uh, this police officer's code of conduct, because it's not just going to affect one. As you can see, the spillover is now affecting people who are not black. Strange to say that, but that is the way that injustice works. It's the way that hatred works. Uh, it just spills over onto everyone. And so in order for us to have a, a, a better community and a, and a better society, we must speak up now uh, before this thing gets out of hand because of the fact that it could be Daniel Shavers today but it could be you on the morrow. That is a terrible tragedy. If you look at statistics of police killings and uh, how many people, unarmed people, have been killed by the police uh, because the police thought that they had a gun, whether it was a 12-year-old uh, Tamir Rice uh, a few years ago or whether it was a Sandra Bland uh, who mouthed off at the police officer and wound up mysteriously uh, hanged in her jail cell, uh, we must stay involved and we must stay 
watchful. How many of us can forget the Philando Castillo uh, video put up there by Diamond Reynolds uh, showing the hasty execution of an unarmed man sitting in the front seat of his car who had admitted to the police uh, that he had a, a, a right to carry a weapon and had the weapon uh, in the vehicle in the glove compartment. But yet a black man, te black man telling a white man that he has a gun is a license to get killed even in a, a open carry state. And so we have these inequities that are pressing and that are ongoing and that we must address ourselves and we must uh, stay on the firing line. Keep hearing me say stay on the firing line. We used to be out there on the corner of Crenshaw and Florence. Or rather Crenshaw, excuse me, we used to be on the corner of Western and Florence. And of course Crenshaw and Florence is another bad corner. Crenshaw and Corner and uh, Crenshaw and Florence, Western and Florence, and of course the more notorious Florence and Normandy. Uh, all of those are rather notorious for uh, crime or for events, unsavory events occurring. And we used to be out there, and we still uh, urge people to stay involved, stay connected. Uh, with the community in urging a decrease in our crimes against each other and, of course, in subsequently demanding a decrease in the crimes of law enforcement against the innocent uh, citizen that they are sworn to protect and to serve. I leave that for you to marinate on. Uh, but we must not uh, become complacent, uh, whether you're in San Diego or whether you're in San Francisco or whether you're in New York or whether you're in Dallas, Texas. Uh, the cry is still uh, the same. And the only way to improve uh, the way the police perform uh, their duties is to make sure that somehow that we make changes in those police manuals. I think most people realize that the police are too uh, overarmed. They become a paramilitary organization, and the seemingly ability of of uh, juries to acquit or to find not guilt, pass not guilty verdicts uh, in obvious cases of terrible, horrific uh, killings and murders. That if you or I did it we would be found guilty and would have to pay the price. But here we are with uh, sworn officers who are more professionally trained than you or I, but yet they make these great errors, mistakes in judgment, and they are simply acquitted to go back and do it all over again. This is not going to change until we change it. We must become the change that we uh, urging others to uh, to bring to pass, we must act to become uh, an agent of that change. We must not merely say that we're aboard the Titanic. We must be able to start putting down the lifeboats so that we can all uh, be saved and we can all be delivered if we cannot take over the ship and keep the captain from running it into an iceberg. Speaking of iceberg, we come to uh, find out this week that one of our local uh, ministers, Umarosa by name, uh, was resigned or else was fired from working in the Trump White House. Wonder what that's all about. One day she was flying high, and the next day even such a gentle soul as uh, Robin Roberts was saying by Felicia <laughs> to Omarosa Madigal Newman. It seems that she doesn't have any friends out there, that she's angered a lot of people, even in the black community. 
And if you go on YouTube or you look at the videos, uh, you don't find a sympathetic ear for Reverend Omarosa. And one can only wonder, as did uh, General Kelly, what was her job in the White House. And we know she was a confidant of uh, President Trump for over 13 or 14 years. But what was her job in the White House? And it appears when she was uh, in conversation in uh, Washington there with uh, General Kelly that he was not intending to fire her, but she pushed the issue. And uh, as a result, she, her, let's say her, her, act, her card was deactivated so that she can no longer uh, get on the White House grounds. And those of you that work uh, in these industries, you know you have to have a card. You get your card in these gates now. And if your card don't work, you can't get in. And it appears that the Secret Service have deactivated her card so that she no longer has access to the grounds at the White House. She now has to come in as a visitor in a limited uh, capacity. My, 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 how art the mighty fallen. How things have changed by hour uh, by hour. Now we must talk about the big election that has occurred uh, with Mr. Doug Jones beating out Roy Moore. And we want to give a shout out to the people of the state of Alabama who turned out in big numbers and who turned back this flood of right-wing conservatism that was threatening to engulf the whole nation. And we hope it rejuvenates uh, our Democratic brothers and sisters, and indeed all people of goodwill in this nation, to renew the fight uh, for justice, renew the fight for rights. Sure, uh, the Republicans are in the ascendancy. ascendancy. They got the White House, they got the Congress, and in point of fact, they have the Supreme Court. But there is still uh, a gleam of hope as a reason for hope. And uh, even as old Bernie Sanders said uh, in his uh, bid for the White House, there's reason for hope, there's grounds for hope, and the good people of Alabama have given us a shot in the arm. 98% of the black vote turned out and voted overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly for Doug Jones. Come to find out this Doug Jones had prosecuted the uh, killers of those four little girls there in the 16th Street bombing there in uh, Birmingham, that he was the prosecutor. So at least he comes with some decent uh, bona fides. He knows something about our community and about the struggles of our people. And he seems to be more of a less conservative bent than Roy Moore. And then, of course, he didn't bring with him the additional uh, taint or suspicion of uh, being someone who had violated uh, the rights of people that he worked with, especially uh, the women, sexual harassment, and uh, that type of thing. And yet... The president of the United States of America was endorsing uh, Roy Moore over Doug Jones simply for his vote. And the people of Alabama said, we're not going to stand for it. We're not going to put up with it. We're not going to allow it. And they turned out in Selma and all over that state to let the world know that there were still some decent people in the state of Alabama. Shout out to the great citizens. Shout out to the great state of Alabama for showing us the way again, giving us a ray of light, a gleam of hope 
in the midst of our darkness. Now we had wrote down and we had uh, laid out the stats, but we don't want to overwork you with a lot of statistics. But one thing is for sure, the, it was the black vote that was the deciding factor in the special elect, senatorial election head, held there in uh, Alabama this week. Had it not been for the black vote, then darkness would really have engulfed that state, which is struggling to get out from under the, that past, that dark and ugly past by such men as George Wallace and his ilk, who really cast a bad reputation upon a great state. And so we're looking forward to better things in 2017. Uh, coming out of Alabama and coming out of California, uh, coming out of all of our great states that will turn back this dark night and cause us all to walk in the newness of life. And if there's one thing I believe in, it, it is the power of God, the redemptive power of God to change minds, to change conditions, to change circumstances, yes, and even to change nations. God has that power. God is a great agent of change, and he can bring about a change in the life of this nation. I believe in applied Christianity. You've heard applied economics. I believe in applied Christianity. It's not good enough to just talk it. you got to walk it. You can't just preach it. You got to practice it. You got to demonstrate it. You got to show what you are talking about. Somebody said a long time ago, I what you're doing speaks so loud, I can't hear what you're saying. Somebody else says, I'd rather see a sermon than hear one. And so what we are doing now in the United States of America, indeed, is that we are walking the walk and not just talking that great talk. It's important for you and for me. A lot of times we feel, or we hear the uh, young people say, what's the point of my voting? Let Alabama be a lesson for you. That's the point of voting. That's the point of registration. That's the point of turnout. So that when these type of issues come up, remember, it's not the presidential election that is the great decider. It is the local election. Local school boards, local mayors, uh, voting for your senators, state and national senators. Those are the people who set policy. All the president does is see that the laws are faithfully carried out. That's his, that's his oath of office, to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States of America, not the flag. Mind you, the Constitution. But it is the job of the people, we the people, to send our message to these various uh, politicians. And don't worry about the skin color of the person. You worry about their policies and their practices because it is no longer uh, important in our uh, advancement uh, what the person looks like because you can have somebody that looks like you, like a Ben Carson or a Clarence Thomas, and what do you get out of it? Just somebody that looks like you. You need somebody that will get up there and change policy. You need someone that will advocate uh, on your behalf. And uh, that is one thing that I think we as a people have got to come to grips with, that it's no longer good enough that you look like me. You got to do something for me. And i never forget of my neighbor uh, one time was had some problem that, re, that he was trying to get worked out, and he went to the local Democrat uh, representative to get some help and wasn't able to get it. And for some reason, he wrote to one of the uh, Republicans. And I believe at the time, that Republican was Strom Thurmond, and his problem was resolved. So it's not always that the person 
It either looks like you or even is in your party. You know, remind you, Strom Thurmond was himself an avowed uh, racist, even though he did uh, father a child by uh, his black maid. But uh, that's neither here nor there. But the point is, action. You need results, consequences, good effect. And so keep that in mind at all times uh, as we uh, press on with our uh, day and uh, with our events. We're down to the last five minutes already, and we're just not starting to warm up, loosen our tongue. <laughs> we, are, we are most grateful to uh, our radio station, uh, KTYM, and remember, you can, I don't know whether you're seeing this on video or you're seeing it on Facebook, but our name of our program is It's Time. And today's program, of course, uh, was headed pressing on. And remember, coming out of Alabama, we've got to be uh, pressing on. One other thing I wanted to uh, mention in closing is that there will be a uh, prayer vigil tonight at 6.30. And I don't have the address. I believe it's 1810 Rosecrans uh, for Reverend Arturo Frazier. And uh, Reverend Arturo Frazier was a young minister, 39 years of age. He was coming out of the church service, a communion, I believe, Sunday night. And uh, he was walking across the street. And he was struck and killed there on Atlantic and the 710 freeway. So they're going to have a a, a vigil for him uh, starting at 6.30. I want to encourage and remind all of us, jaywalking can get you killed. (laughs) Be careful. Not only must you look out for the police, you got to look out for them cars. But the very fact that that car outweighs you, and this is the second friend of mine, second preacher friend of mine, uh, that's been killed in an auto accident on the street. Not saying that uh, the Reverend was jaywalking, but we do know that uh, my other friend, the Reverend uh, Herman Avery, it became all over the national news because the person that struck him uh, left him wedged in the windshield of his car and went into uh, the local store right there at 82nd and Western with his nine-year-old child in tow and got something to drink and came on out and walked away. And it was only after a $50,000 reward was offered that he turned uh, himself in. Now, in the case of Reverend Arturo Frazier, the driver stopped immediately. As the law says, you must stop and render aid. But Unfortunately, Reverend uh, Frazier was beyond was beyond saving because by the time the paramedics got there, he had uh, passed away. Point is, got to be careful walking across these streets, especially at nighttime because look at me. I got glasses on. If you're walking out there at night, I can't see you, especially if you got a black suit on. Worst thing you could do is walk out in the street without looking to see what's coming. And be very careful about walking out in the street if somebody's going to make a right turn. Because believe me, it's bad enough to make a right turn in the daytime. But at nighttime, your vision is that much more reduced. Remember, the theme of our program is it's time. And we thank God for you. We thank God for the things that he is doing. And we believe and we continue to persevere because now we know that it's time. Thank you very much. God bless all of you. <laughs>